it's a particular pleasure for me to introduce the governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, a man whom I've gotten to know in the marketplace when he tirelessly and skillfully led Massachusetts trade missions to Israel, the United Kingdom, and, and Brazil. Governor Patrick's life has charted a path from the south side of Chicago to the United States Justice Department, Fortune 500 boardrooms, and now the Massachusetts State House. He has both the background and the perspective to understand the power of public, private, and academic partnerships. Indeed, I would say Massachusetts has a competitive edge among all the states in the country in this area. And through targeted initiatives that play to the Commonwealth's unique strengths, such as his landmark 10-year, $1 billion life sciences industry program, the governor has positioned the state as a global leader in innovation economics, including biotech, biopharmaceuticals, IT, clean energy, and the list goes on. His international trade initiatives and the missions he has led have promoted exports, attracted overseas investments, and directly contributed to job creation and economic growth. So in Governor Patrick's vision of cross-cultural partnerships, I'm pleased to note that universities play an important role. We provide intellectual capital. We convene gatherings such as today's summits. And we teach the next generation of global innovators to think critically, reason effectively, communicate constructively, and create the intellectual framework for new ideas and companies. You know, since its founding in 1948, Brandeis University has been an active and engaged member of the community, reaching out to our local and global neighbors. And as Art has mentioned about the International Business School, we've started to forge relationships with the dynamic, innovating economies that we're here to talk about today. I was so pleased to represent Brandeis, as I said, on the recent trade missions to Israel, the United Kingdom, and Brazil. And again, I have to tell you, we're getting the word out around the world about Massachusetts companies. And it's my true belief that if we just continue to get the word out, that these companies are the best in the world and compete with any companies in the world. So Governor Batrick, with your background in civil rights law, in business, and as a leader of this commonwealth, you not only provide a model for our students to emulate, but you serve as such an effective spokesperson for Massachusetts around the world. So please join me in once again welcoming Governor Duval Patrick back to the Brandeis University campus. Thank you very much, Bruce. Thank you for the warm introduction and for your leadership, Art. Thank you for having me back here at IBS and for your leadership on the IBS board. To all the members of the diplomatic corps who are here, my friends and partners in our work overseas of the administration and the quasi-publics, and ladies and gentlemen from around the Commonwealth and around the world, thank you very much for having me today. Um, I want to thank also all of the organizers of the conference. And at some point, I hope the folks in the peanut gallery will explain why it is you got stuck up there and you can't. Are they feeding you at least? They are feeding you. All right. Um, I hope we can spend most of our time in conversation, but I thought at the outset I'd just say a word or two about uh, the kind of collaboration and partnership that both Bruce and Art have spoken to and um, why I think it is so extraordinarily important for us uh, to, uh, to seize, to improve on, to expand, and to make very much the most of. You all know that the global economy waits for no one. It's happening, ready or not. And it seems to me we have every reason to be ready to participate and to participate successfully. As governor, I have made it my mission to make Massachusetts a global player in today's innovation economy, an economy that is all about the explosion of knowledge. And when you think about the concentration of brain power we have here in the Commonwealth, we have a natural advantage and a natural opportunity that we ought to take advantage of. This morning or this afternoon, I want to make just a few remarks about what our growth strategy is. By the way, the folks who've been on our trade missions and Pamela Goldberg and others can recite this verbatim, right? Um, and I'm going to test you in just a moment. Um, we've pursued a growth strategy based on targeted investments in three things, in education, in innovation, and in infrastructure. We invest in education to assure that our students are prepared for the jobs and the society of tomorrow. We invest in innovation to stay on the cutting edge of growth industries like biotech and life sciences, clean tech, 
information technology and data, data management, communications and financial services, which is more and more an IT business. And we invest in infrastructure because that's the foundation on which everything else rests. Meanwhile, we continue to do the important work of reducing the cost of doing business. We're taking important steps to reduce the cost of health insurance, as I think many of you have followed. More companies offer insurance to their employees today than before health reform went into effect here in Massachusetts. We slowed premium rate increases from an average of 17% two years ago to less than 2% today. Starting last month, thanks to legislation we passed about a year ago, small businesses will be able to obtain plans in the market for as much as 20% less than current rates. We've cut the corporate tax rate from 9.5% when I took office to 8% today, a savings to some 35,000 Massachusetts companies. Add to that a host of tax credits and incentive programs, and we have a strong set of tools to encourage investment here and, we, and, and enable our companies here to grow. The time it takes to, to obtain state permits has been reduced from an average of two years when I took office uh, to less than six months today, four months in the case of new insurance products. And we recently launched the Commonwealth's first comprehensive uh, effort to review all of our old regulations. Anything 12 years or older is on the table. We're about a quarter of the way through some 2,000 regulations. We're rescinding many. We are simplifying others. Our strategy is paying off. Unemployment is well below the national average. In the first two months of 2012 alone, we've added more than 23,000 new jobs. We are home to a booming startup community. In 2011 alone, Massachusetts captured well over $3 billion in venture capital from around the, the world. We have the number one life, life sciences supercluster in the world today in a clean tech sector that grew jobs at the rate of 6.7% last year and is expected to double that growth rate in 2012. Our concentration of iTech firms here in Massachusetts is four times the national average. We, were, we rank first in the Kaufman Foundation's New Economy Index and first in economic competitiveness in Suffolk University's Beacon Hill Institute uh, recent report. And we've come from the bottom third to the sixth best place for business in the country, according to CNBC. I find sixth hard to say. First is easier to say. That is where we're going. To get there, we'll continue to look outward to opportunities in the global economy and to build upon last year's $28 billion in exports from Massachusetts out into the world. Through the work of the Massachusetts uh, Office of International Trade and Investment and the Massachusetts Export Center, we are bringing Massachusetts to the world. This week, we are launching the Massachusetts Export Resource Center, a, an online one-stop shop for exporting to help businesses take advantage of international opportunities. And thanks to a grant received from the U.S. Small Business Administration, we're helping, launch, uh, we're helping small businesses in the state begin or expand their export operations. And we'd be happy to answer some questions you may have about that. We have seen tremendous success from our trade missions uh, last year to Israel, to the UK, to Brazil, and to Chile. We've signed agreements for research and innovation partner partnerships with educational institutions and government entities abroad. In Brazil, we launched the uh, Top USA Massachusetts program, an initiative to promote an academic exchange of faculty and students between several Brazilian and North American universities, including the, univer the University of Massachusetts system. And in Israel, we created a partnership to encourage and support innovation and entrepreneurship between our respective life sciences, clean energy, and technology sectors. International companies are now making Massachusetts their home away from home more often, building headquarters and growing jobs. Israeli-based Early Sense and UK-based IDBS, Total Mobile, and Sagentia are just a few examples of this. And we continuously host delegations of government and business leaders from all across the globe interested in a deeper commercial relationship with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. In that vein, I want to mention another result of our innovation mission to Brazil. As the sixth largest economy in the world and the fastest growing middle class, Brazil has be become an important international partner for Massachusetts. Brazil's innovation sectors, clean tech, life sciences, IT, education as well, 
are natural partners in the global, uh, for us in the global economy, and we had a fruitful and informative mission there in December. President Dilma Rousseff will travel to Washington next week to meet with President Obama, and I am pleased to announce that she will make one other trip here while she's in Massachusetts, and that is to visit with us here in Boston. We look very much forward to welcoming her to the State House and to sitting down with her and a small group of Massachusetts business leaders to discuss how to expand opportunities to further our relationship. In many other ways, we continue to build on the successes of our trade missions as we strengthen our capacity to look outward as well as inward. And that's why forums like this one are so important. The International Business School here gets it. By virtue of your presence here, you all get it. I want you to know that your state government, better and better every day, is also getting it. And increasingly, we are working together across private and public sector lines with the academy, with uh, small and large companies alike, and great thinkers and entrepreneurs around the Commonwealth and around the world. That collaboration is how we will win the future. And I look forward to the conversation. Thank you again for having me today.